guys, John here with Survival Dispatch, and join with me today is... The old Angry American. All right, we're sitting at the table, and uh, just wanted to, to bring up a topic. Yeah, a lot of people, again, this is one of those romance reality yeah. things. And, and, and you could say that I'm probably the, one of the biggest instigators of this. Yes, you, you know. write a lot of romance novels. I do, I do, under a pseudonym, right. but you know, um, they're popular. So, so the, the topic always comes up. Bug out bags, get home bags. Get home bags, bugging out. What do they got in common? What do they got in common? One there's thing. only one thing. There's one, yeah, there's one thing that bugging out and getting home. Guaranteed. Is going to have in common. Yep. You're going to do it in either one. Yep. And that is walking. Walking. Soul train. You know, and, and it's a part that's, that's often overlooked. Yeah, because I can't tell you how many events that I go to and stuff. Like, I'm going to one next weekend up in yep. North Carolina. Um, if you're coming to Heritage Life Skills, I'll be there. Um, that people bring kit, and we see it in training classes all the time. Somebody will show up with a ruck that they need a wheelbarrow for. Yeah. Um, that's one thing people underestimate is their physical fitness level to carry whatever the hell it is they've jammed into these bags. Yeah. Um, another thing I don't think most people consider is the footwear. Yeah, and, and, and that's one of the things that um, we tend to lean towards water, which is important. Very important. Food, mm -hmm. which can be very important. Yep. Uh, security yep. and the means of firearms yep. and you know less than lethal, yep. I will say. Um, shelter. Shelter, fire. You know, that's the stuff everybody kind of gravitates towards. Those kind of those, medical, those five. Yeah. You know, but what what a lot of people don't want to talk about is putting in the miles. Um, yeah. And and it's one of those things where it's funny because it translates. Um, we'll take our our studio here. Um, we are I think it's like nine miles away from my house. I'm a little farther away. You know, nine nine miles from from here to to my house. It's like ninety, ninety and change. Yeah. Ninety one or ninety two to my house from here. Um, but there's one thing that is guaranteed from, from this studio to my house or this studio to your house is miles. Yeah. That, that's it. You could, we could go nine miles. It, it might suck, but we could do it without water. Yeah, it, it depends on the time you know, of year. Time of year, but, but you could do it without water. But even, even um, yeah, I mean, you can get a water bottle. Yeah, I mean, hell, you yeah. Know, you know, a bottle of soda will get you there even. You, you, you know. really don't need any food. No, you don't need no food. Um, there's a pretty good likelihood that you wouldn't need a firearm yeah, and, this, and, the, and in the direction we're going in this area, yeah, yeah. you probably wouldn't need one at all. Uh, we're not going to build a shelter. Nope. We're probably not going to make a fire for any nope. reason. So, you know, and, and this started coming up. Chris and I were, were riding to lunch one day, and it started coming up. You know, a lot of people asking me, like, hey, what should I put in a get-home bag for, like, a 10-mile trip? Yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah. and, and it comes back to, to all that changes is the mileage. Yeah. But no matter what, it's going to be miles. Yep. And... And it's one of those things where a lot of people overlook, uh, first of all, shoes. Footwear is a big one to me. I, I think I think it's a very overlooked prep. Yeah. You know, especially like you, Grayson. Yep. Got a little guy. Yep. He's gonna grow up. You got shoes for him? I got a couple pairs for the next couple of sizes. There you go. Yeah. See, so, um, and even for adults, like in, in the back of my truck, I'm wearing Keens today. I've got good footwear on. If I had to walk in these, I can walk all the way home in these. Yeah. But I also have a pair of boots. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some tanners in the bed of the truck, along with the packs and the gear and other stuff. Um, I, I don't think enough people plan on the footwear. And at home, I have multiple pairs of boots yeah. and Keens and um, other, what was that one? I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, from the books, I forgot the name of the shoes. But uh, I've gravitated towards Keen. But having multiple pairs, because, you know, if, if something dramatic was to happen, and, you know, even, like, tornadoes, hurricanes, and floods can put people on foot, you know. Snow can. I was going to say, Atlanta, when it had that yeah. blizzard a few years ago, I had a friend that was in that traffic, and he was able to step out of his truck because he had good boots on and a, and a good winter coat. He grabbed his pack, slung it over his shoulder, and started walking down the interstate, and he was texting us, Pictures of mm -hmm. ladies in heels and, you know, just like uh, stockings, you know, yeah. uh, and business, skirts. Business. Business. Wear. Business. Time. Yeah, guys in, you know, wingtips and, yeah. and, and penny loafers and stuff trying to walk through snow to get home because they didn't have another option. Yeah. They didn't plan ahead. They didn't have that stuff in their vehicle. So throwing your ruck in your car is great, 
But if you're going to the beach for the weekend and you leave the house in flip-flops, you better make sure you got a pair of boots to that or at least a pair of decent shoes. Yeah, and, it, and it's one of those things where um, with regards to shoes, shoes and then socks. Socks. Um, is, is another item that a lot of people overlook. You have to, there's only one way to test to see if you will work. Yeah. And that is to put miles in. And it's one of the things where uh, I did a 52-mile uh, Go Ruck event uh, the end of November. It ended up being 52.4 miles, if you want to really know. And we did it in 17 hours. Um, completed it. But it was one of those things where we had prepared for, for quite a few months. Uh, I'm in decent shape, but we still prepared for quite a few months. But it was one of those things where I could go five miles in almost any pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Made no difference. Yeah. Ten miles, it was like, ooh, a little hot yeah. spot right Get there. Get a little warm. But past ten miles, you know, ten to twenty-five miles, uh, kind of from ten, 25 miles on. Yeah. It can be hell for people. And uh, this event started at 9 o'clock at night. We ended at 2 or 3 the next day. Okay? A solid hiking. And it was 15 to 16 minute miles every single wow. mile. And But it was one of those things where um, we saw people, Chris, probably 15 miles into it. I saw this dude carrying his shoes and walking in his socks. And there's a part of me where it's like, hey, this is just a, this is a fun event. And there's a yeah. part of me I just want to be like, bro, just stop. Yeah, stop. You, you can stop and go you, home. Just stop, yeah, because you're not going 35 miles in your socks. No. But then it started to hit me. If we're going to talk about a, a prepping situation, that's what you're going to see. Oh, you're yeah. going to see people walking down the interstate in socks yeah. because they cannot take their, their shoes, shoes anymore. anymore. Yep. And, and it could be, listen, this dude had running shoes. Yeah. We're not talking like he had he wing hiking or boots loafers. or anything. He wasn't even hiking boots, no, right? He was in running shoes. Running shoes. Yeah. Like these shoes are made to put miles yeah. in, but they didn't fit his feet correctly. Right. I guarantee they didn't fit his feet correctly. Uh, he might have had a size too small or a size too big, yep. and his foot was, you know, and, I, and you could tell right then and there, like, this dude had never gone 15 miles on foot. On foot. Yeah. Thought he could. Had yeah. shoes that Feet the, just let him the down. company said yeah. you can, um, but you have to work hard to find shoes that fit your feet. Well, and, uh, and two, and then, and then the socks, you know, yeah. for some reason it, it cracks me up. People spend a lot of money on their clothes, except for the, their, their base layer, socks their underwear, underwear and their socks. Yep. Everybody goes to Walmart and buys Fruit of the Loom, just a white strip sock. That's not formed for a foot or yeah. anything. And I did it for years, too, because I didn't know any better. Yeah. And then cotton underwear, you know, which is awful as hell. You know, um, I'm a big fan of Darn Tough yep. um, and Smart Wool. I like yep. both of those for socks. Ex officio for your drawers. Yep. You know, um, they're way more comfortable. They keep the moisture away, both feet and, you know, your drawers, yeah. which is a big deal. Because, you know, like you're saying, too. It's not just your feet that can let you down. If, if you're suddenly put on foot and it's not something you're accustomed to, chafing can be an issue. Yeah, crotch rot, oh, diaper you know, rash. Monkey butt, um, you know, I mean, <laughs> they, 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 they'll take you out of the game I, just as fast. So, so I mean, we'll, we'll get real real here. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I started having some issues in the rear portion of yep, my body. It'll happen. Uh, probably around mile 45. Mm. And, um, you know, it is one of those things. Uh, I, had, I had one blister. And this is one of those frustrating things. I had one blister on my pinky toe that I had never had, even Before. though I had did. And it started like five miles in. I really? Don't know, I don't know why. I had worn those shoes for probably 100 miles. Maybe the way the sock was on it? Yeah, I don't know what it was. Um, as far as, you know, underclothing for me, uh, darn tough socks are fantastic. Love them. Uh, and Jinji, the toe socks, you know, you might think they're for yoga people, um, but they can save your your toes. Um, oh, they go on keep, like a glove or something? Yeah, they go on like a glove and they keep your toes from rubbing against each other. Another good thing is, is, a, is a silk undersock. Yep. So you put a silk sock so on first, then you say. put your wool sock on. And what that does is the silk, it's kind of weird to walk in. You feel like your feet are sliding around in your, in your boots a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Um, but they kind of can really eliminate blisters. Yeah. I mean, they can make a huge, huge yeah. difference. Um, and you know, and it's just, it's one of those things where uh, I guarantee you this podcast, this this video will not get a ton of likes nope. because it's not a sexy topic. Yeah, it's not um, high speed cool or nothing, but yeah. it's real. This is, this is like he said a minute ago, this is real talk. You know, your, your feet, um, your, your joints where things are rubbing and bumping and stuff like that. When you're on, especially Florida in like September, yeah. if you're having to hike any distance at all, that's brutal. It's brutal. I mean, it's just so brutal. And there's other places in the country that are hot too, but yeah. 
down here, it's so humid and it's so damn hot. I mean, you know, you'd be hard pressed to put those 50 miles in in 17 hours if you're doing yeah. it during the daylight in Florida yeah. in the summer. Yeah. Um, you might be able to pull it off at night, but even then, you're, you're going to be, hydration is going to be a problem for you big time. Yeah, and, you, you know, and, it, and it was, it's one of those things where, um, you know, so, so you have to start with your shoes and yep. your socks. Um, and, and then, you know, underwear is important as well. Yep. Um, you know, and this, these are the things that you just don't see built into people's get home no, bags. No, like how many, if you guys watching here, comment. Come, how many of you have a blister kit in your pack? Yeah, and that's, and that's another thing that moleskin. you have to go with, man. Moleskin. Mm -hmm. um, I like KT tape. It's a little bit thinner than moleskin. Yep. It sticks really well um, because as soon as, 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 soon as the hot spot soon starts, as it starts, you get it on there. have to address it. Right. Um, I pre-taped my feet even for this event. Um, I didn't pre-tape my pinky because I've never had an issue with it. Right. And but anywhere else you'd up. experience blisters before you taped up yeah. first. Yeah. So. But it was one of those things where um, we saw we saw like horrific blisters. Oh, I bet. I'm talking whole sides of feet mm. like ripped off like they were in a fire, you know. Mm. Um, and and just it was a gnarly event. Uh, <sighs> you had to carry right around 35 pounds of weight also, you know, in your pack. Um, plus your water. And plus your water, you know, no consumable, non, non consumables had to be 35 pounds plus water, food, anything like that. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things where you have to have a blister kit. It has to have, um, I would say some like body glide in it to help yep. with chafing, uh, some tape. Um, Even just a t tube of Vaseline yeah. would, would go wonder, especially for guys, you start chafing in the rear. I mean, it sounds gross, but you know, Got it. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> grease it up, and it, it, you, so you can keep moving. Otherwise, you're going to be down. You but, know. I mean. But it was, but it was one of those things where you know you also have to have. Uh, I prefer a needle. Um, you can use a safety pen if you do have some blisters that that need to be popped, yep. because uh, you know, and there's and there's the controversy of hey, don't pop it, pop it, don't pop it, pop it. Um, I believe you should pop it and then. Drain it. Drain it and then put a band aid on it, get some neosporin yep. on it. And this is all stuff that should be in a blister kit because if you don't pop it and it gets worse, pressure just keeps building. It's going to rip. Yeah. yeah. And so oh, you're going to yeah. go from instead of a, a pin size hole yeah. that drained it, now you're talking a quarter size blister or something that just ripped off. And that can be 10 times worse. Um, now, I, the minute, yeah, you're opening yourself up to major infection now because yeah. you just lost all I that. I saw feet bleeding through socks. Oh. Um, you know, it. Probably it, toenails, I yeah, would imagine. People, it's, it's, another thing, if your shoes don't fit right, your toenails, especially if you're in uh, varying terrain yeah, as far as up and downs. downs. Downs are the worst for your toenails. Um, yeah, you will you can lose those too. They can come off like, so, if you're not doing So, yeah, right. so I mean, these are whole things that, all things that need to be in a blister kit. And it can be small too. I mean, yeah, I'm mine's, mine's like this. Real small. Yes. And, uh, and that can help you because it could get to the point where it doesn't matter if you have an AR or an AK and 10 mags, if after 15 miles, yeah. your feet are shot. Yeah. It just doesn't, you're going to get rid of that stuff anyways at that point because yeah. you're going to try, try to lighten your load. And I know people right there are like, oh, I'm never going to drop my rifle. You will drop your rifle. Um, after 35 miles, I wanted nothing but to get rid of my pack. I mean, at that event, yeah. it, man, it was, it was getting hot. It was, it just, you're just done. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, we were doing it straight. Um, and too, I mean, you, you know, you got to consider that you guys put in 52 miles, yeah. like, and just one hard push. Yeah. Most folks are not going to find themselves in that position. No. And you're going to, you know, you're going to start developing issues with feet or other problems and you, and you can stop, you know, I yeah. mean, it's, it's there's nothing, unless there's, you know, a band of, you know, zombie bikers behind you, yep. you can, you can stop and, and address these things, take a break, you know, um, and, and get your wind back and then, and then set off again. So yeah, you, you might probably not going to push 50 miles in a day, 50 miles in a day, which is, that's a hell of a yeah. accomplishment, but you know, maybe you're going to do 10 miles a day. Yeah. And it was one of those maybe things. Maybe five miles a day. You know, we did it. I did it, uh, to test. Yeah. To test myself um, yeah. to go out and put myself in, in an environment that I didn't want to be in. No. I, I would have rather have been at home yeah. on a Saturday, uh, you know, sitting on my couch. Uh, that's just where I would rather have yeah. been, yeah. Um, you know, to to pretty much watch the sun go down and the sun come back up and you're still doing the same thing and you know you got Walking. another full day in front of you. Yeah. Um, but But it was one of those things where... It was a true test. Oh, yeah. And you know? now you know. And and so, you know, we've talked about shoes, Chris. We've talked about socks. Yep. You know, another thing that I see is clothing. Um, 
hey, I wear jeans most days. And I don't want to wear jeans. So I have a pair of running shorts. Yeah. Uh, if it's summertime, I have a pair of running. Usually, I, I am extremely warm natured. Is that what you say if you sweat a lot? Or are you cold natured? No, that's warm natured. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty warm natured. Um, I will hike in 20 degree weather and still wear shorts because I know I'm going to warm up yep. pretty fast. So I have a pair of running shorts rolled up in my kit. So, hey, I'm wearing jeans. Even if we're going 20 miles, the ice don't want to do it in jeans. Yeah. I mean, I'd probably start with like pulling out my knife and cutting them into shorts. Yeah, and you're ripping them legs uh, off of just, them. Just, dude, cotton is just going to soak up that sweat I'm, and I'm it's not going a, to make it even worse. I'm not a fan of cotton clothing at all. Yeah. I mean, like everything I'm wearing today is a blend. Yeah. Um, and blends have their issues too, but it's just too uncomfortable to wear wool all yep. the damn time. So you, you got to sacrifice. But I won't wear cotton. Uh, you know, and, and people, some people laugh when you say, you know, cotton kills. Oh, cotton kills. Ha ha. Well, it does. It can. Yeah. Um, you know, if you get that stuff wet and it's cold, you're done. It's never going to dry out. And I remember I worked heavy industrial construction for, you know, almost 20 years. I wore jeans to work Carhartt's most of my life. And then I moved to Carhartt, mm -hmm. which is just even heavier cotton. Mm -hmm. jeans. And I can remember being wet all day long. Yeah. Cotton underwear, nice. cotton outerwear, and you're just soaking wet. Yep. You're just, everything's wet. And, you know, I mean, you come home at night, you take your wallet out of your pocket, and it's soaked through mm -hmm. because it just kept all that moisture there. Uh, so your, your, the clothing you pick to use, and, and, you know, everybody's on a budget. We get that. Um, you don't have to have 5'11", you know, yep. per se. There's other stuff you can get out there, you know, um, other brands. It have to be Under Armour, which I don't support Under Armour. I wouldn't buy anything they make. But... Um, you can do it on a budget too, yeah. and don't just settle for you know Walmart's Wrangler jeans because they're they're the cheapest thing. Again, this is stuff that you're planning and you're, you're making these plans and preparations with the intent of saving your life. I can't yep. say that enough. Yep. Invest in it a little bit, and and be realistic about it and your abilities. And the only way you find that out is to what? Do it. Do it. Get out there and do it. That's why in the Insider, at the back of the Insider, now every month there's a checklist and a challenge for you. We're trying to get you guys off the couch, which is where we'd all like to be on yeah. a nice Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon. But get off the couch and go out there and do this stuff. Because, like John said, he learned. And, and this guy hikes the AT trail. I mean, this is, he's a hiker. That's, so what are we, he's one of them yeah. granola crunchers that yeah. hikes the AT. You can tell he's really, you know. Yeah. But uh, you won't know unless you go do it. Yeah. You know, some of the events we do, they're not fun. Like, yeah. this stuff's not enjoyable, but it's how you learn and find your own limits. You learn what you need to work on. Going out in a, you know, to going to the gun range and, and practicing, you know, tendering in something from a standing position supported because you're good at it isn't teaching you anything. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe instead you need to be working on uh, shooting offhand, unsupported, you know, with a tennis ball taped into your other hand. Deal with your gun that way. You know, practice stuff that you're not good at because that's yep. how you get good at them. Just working on the stuff you're already good at doesn't teach you anything or improve anything for you. Yeah, and, and it's the same with, it's the same with, I'm going to say hiking, putting in miles. You That's, know, yeah. it, it's one of those things where you have to get out and do it. Um, you have to put your pack on, you know, and that's what I was going to lean to next. I mean, you know, you have to have a, you have to have a shirt that's comfortable. Um, so you don't have chafing problems, you know, under your armpits, across your chest. Um, but the next thing is, is, you know, the thing we overlook with regards to mileage as well is how does your pack fit? Your body. On your yeah. body. Uh, Chris and I are, are built pretty different. I got four or five inches or so on yeah, you. Yeah, four inches. You know? right? yeah. uh, I have an extremely long torso. So a pack that fits I've him pretty well. I've got an extremely well, round one. <laughs> a pack that fits him pretty well, like the waist strap comes like across my belly button, yeah. not my hips. Right. So, um, you know, it's finding a pack that fits you. And then once again, doing what? Putting miles in with it. Because once again, you're like, like everybody wants to put on a pack like at REI and be like, oh man, this thing fits like a dream. <laughs> or, they, or, or at home, they load it. Or at home. They, they load all their yeah. kit in it and they throw it on their back one time and they adjust their straps and they're, that's good. And they take it off. I'm good. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Um, I've got an expensive ruck in my truck. It's a mystery ranch. You know, it's a $700 backpack. It's adjustable nine ways to Sunday. Yeah. And it's adjusted to fit me. Like if somebody else puts it on, it's not going to be comfortable for them because it's designed to my body. Mm -hmm. um, now, again, do you need a $700 backpack? No, but get one that's adjustable and it's designed to fit your body. Um, and, and the only way to do this is to try them out. You know, yeah. uh, you know, John and I both, we have piles of packs because we keep going through them, trying it. Oh, no, that one didn't work, you know, trying different stuff. Because, again, I can't stress it enough, we're doing these things with the intention of 
hopefully saving our or somebody else's life someday. Yeah. So am I, in my mind, there, there is no such thing as too much. Yep. If you look at it that way. I'm doing this to protect my wife, you know, Mel, you guys know Mel, a little bit, my daughters, my friends, my neighbors. Um, that's why I'm doing the stuff that I do. Yeah. I store a lot of stuff, put a lot of stuff away, um, and I learn. You know, I'm going to be on the range this afternoon when I get home, maybe with a new pistol. Yes. So... Yeah, and I'll show you guys that though. You know, it's it's one of those things that um, the mileage is is not the sexy part of bugging out. It's hardly ever talked about. That's the romance community. and reality. The romance yeah. of it is cool. You're walking down the road, and and you got your rifle, but the reality of it is, you're chafing and you're sweating and your mosquitoes are biting up. you. Yeah, your calves are cramping. Yep. Your the arch of your right foot is cramping all to hell. You got a blister on your left foot. You know, and all you want to do, like John said, is take that pack off and throw that rifle down. And that's, you know, and that brings me to, to the next portion is, is you have to have a, what I would consider a, a mileage first aid kit. This isn't a trauma kit. No. This is not a tourniquet. Uh, no. You'll want to use a tourniquet at times just to not <laughs> feel your legs. Just not to feel uh, like But this is, this is geared towards, dude, ibuprofen to get some inflammation down. Yep. Um, you got to have some, like, uh, Biofreeze or uh, for the cramps and the muscles. And, yeah, yeah. To, to loosen them up. Uh, I carried a massage ball. I mean, this thing's the size of a tennis ball. Yeah. Okay, I'm not talking like yeah. a a workout ball or something. It's a but you can sit on it. You can roll your leg on it. To, you have to. You'll get to the point where, like, dude, you're gonna have to roll out a cramp that you have in your leg. Yeah. You're gonna have to roll out, you know, your quads or your calves or even your back just well, because you're tired of it. That brings another point too. Is is like he's talking about your mileage first aid kit, and you probably were gonna say this anyway, but it better have some electrolytes in it. Yes, you better have electrolytes that you can consume yeah. easily, quickly. I remember again when I worked heavy industrial construction at our med shacks. We always had electrolyte tablets. So you could go there and there little two pills in a yep. pack. You could grab a handful of these things, and the uh, the medical guys would be walking around, be like, "Hey, man, you got any electrolyte?" They were always checking mm -hmm. because heat casualties were a big deal, even yeah. in that business. Um, and and how many people have them in their bag yeah. right now? Not I'm going to go get some. How many have them right now? So yeah, and this was just you know a discussion that that Chris and I were having uh, based on things that we've you know, kind of recently gone through. I wanted to share it with you. And wanted to share it. And, and you know, and I challenge you to to really, you know, pull everything out of your bag and and have a mileage section. Yeah. Uh, because it's, it's not talked about that much, you know. And do you have what it takes in order to put mileage? And then have you tested that stuff? Um, I have some, I, I use some Hoka shoes for, for my event. Um, but, you know, like whenever I get in Chris's truck, I have a pair of hookahs either on yep. because I know we're going a, a long ways uh, or I have them in my bag. So, you know, it's one of those things where I carry them. It's, I'm not a brand ambassador. I don't get paid. I no. pay full price for them. But it's one of those things where like, hey, why are you carrying? And they're pretty ugly too. They are weird they're looking. Like, they're ugly. But yeah. I know like, hey, if I had to do 200 miles over a stretch of time, I can do them in these shoes. Yeah. Like I, I, I know I can. I have that confidence because I've done it you know, uh, hiking night after night after night in preparing for this event. So, you know, I know that I'm confident with those shoes and it's one less thing that I have to worry about. Yeah. So therefore I can put my focus and attention towards something else. Yep. And I think that's the biggest thing we want. At the end of the day, a bug out situation, a get home situation, we are trying to make ourselves as comfortable as possible. That's yeah. why we carry, a, that's why we carry most of this stuff. Yeah, and, and two, Bear in mind, the stuff we're talking about here, either trying to get home or, or get out, we're not talking about the end of the world. No. You guys think back to the to the video of 9-11 of and all those people trying to get out of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And everybody had to walk. They were walking over the George Washington Bridge. They were walking over all the bridges because there was no, nothing was moving other than foot power. Yeah. And think of all those people that worked in lower Manhattan that were dressed to work in lower Manhattan, mm -hmm. yeah. finding themselves having to walk out of there. That had to be brutal. Yeah, yeah, and and so you know that's that's a fantastic point, and yeah. um, you know, and I think weather causes people to to have to reevaluate things on a yearly basis, pretty oh, much absolutely. in America. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, seasonal even. I mean, seasonal, you know, yeah. seasonal basis, you're going to be repacking your bags. You should be. Yep. You know, like I just recently took the cold stuff out of my bag and went in with all the lighter stuff. Yeah. You know. 
So, you know, it's a conversation um, that that I don't think is had that often. Yeah, um, it's not one like you said. This one's probably not going to get a lot of likes. Yeah. Uh, but this is the one. This is the kind of stuff people should watch. Not that we're claiming to be the end all be all experts, but we actually do get out and do this stuff. You know, so we can give you some real real world feedback. So. And if you want to see some of the torture that I went to, uh, we'll we'll link the video to to the Go Ruck event also. There you go. Uh, it, it got long and brutal. Uh, yeah, so, I bet it did. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I hope you, Bert. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you know, and and if you have any other topics that you don't think are talked about that often, uh, I'll post them up. Leave a comment below. Yeah, yeah and we'll uh, we'll definitely do a table talk on them, and uh, you know, and bring you our insight um, through if, experiences. If we don't know the answers, we'll make them up. You know. Yeah. So, um, but I, I appreciate you, every one of you guys, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Till next time, guys. See ya.